everyone. My name is Lady Erin and welcome to my world. Today, we are going to carve a pumpkin because Halloween is four days away and I need something to set on my porch. So, when carving a pumpkin, there are a few avenues we can take, but essentially all of the utensils are gonna be the same. You're gonna need a bowl to put all the guts in and remember to save the seeds. Seeds are very good. You also will need a carving kit. I don't have a carving kit, and those little things are dinky anyway. What I do have is a very sturdy knife and a spoon, because they work just as well as any carving kit you can get at the dollar store. So, <clears throat> first thing we want to do is kind of examine our pumpkin. I should have washed it off because it's a little dirty. Figure out what it's going to be. I am going to do a typical jack-o'-lantern face on it just because it's easy, it's simple, and it's something fun we can do for the video. So this area right here will be its face, but before we can even think about carving, we got to gut this sucker. So what you're going to want to do is take your knife, figure out how big you want the cat to be, and stab it. Now, it's really easy. Once you have the knife in the pumpkin, to just kind of wiggle it around. And anyone who's carved pumpkins before know that getting a circular pattern is very difficult. Especially with these knives, because these knives are curved steak knives, and they're super good knives. I use them for everything but they really only like to cut in a straight line. So, getting the cap off the pumpkin is probably going to be more of a square endeavor. Once you've cut all the way around the top, grab the stem, or lack thereof, as you can see, and, well, okay, I don't have a stem, so basically you just kind of pop the sucker out, and out comes the goo. Pumpkins are fascinating. All gourds are fascinating. What I like to do, though, is kind of give him a little bit of a shave. Don't cut the edges because you want the top to fit back on whenever you're done, like I just did. And set your top aside for later. Now comes the fun part. When dealing with pumpkins and gourds or really anything, the insides are liable to be icky and slimy and full, I don't know if you can see it, <clears throat> full of good stuff. And you might think that this is what the spoon is for. No, the spoon is for later. This, this is the fun part. We, getting in there with our hands and ripping it all out. It's something rather satisfying about getting your hands into the pumpkin and pulling out its innards and feeling that texture and at least for me I like to do the one-handed approach that way I have a free hand for whatever I need elsewhere like in case somebody calls or whatever but sometimes you can do the double-handed approach which will get you a little bit more result in a little faster time, depending on if you can actually fit both hands into the pumpkin. Which, I really can't, so the one-handed approach just works for me. But really get in there and dig deep and let your fingers squish in all the goo and the slime and see, look how beautiful it is. It's all slimy and gooey. 
And like I said, you're going to want to save the seeds because the seeds are delicious when roasted. I don't know if you've ever roasted seeds before, but they are amazing. And a tea made out of pumpkin seeds can cure you of parasites. So if you have parasites, pumpkin tea is the way to go. Well, pumpkin seed tea. Now at this point, you're probably feeling pretty in tune with your pumpkin. You already know what it's going to look like. You've cut its head off. You've molested its insides and ripped them out. So you, you should be pr feeling pretty at one with the pumpkin. Just let its goo seep through you. This is my favorite part of Halloween. Goop. I think pumpkin might actually be good for the skin too. So if you're really feeling adventurous, take some of that goop. Maybe not the big stringy bits, but just kind of rub your hand all in there and get some goop and really just, really just rub it on. Nice little pumpkin face mask. Think of it as war paint. You just defeated your enemy and now you must paint your face in its blood. But that's only if you're serious. Like amateur pumpkin carvers, you guys, you don't need to do this. But those of us who've been doing this for a long time, we know. Pumpkin Uprising of 1893. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if pumpkin's good for your skin either. I may have this white pumpkin on my face for no reason, but it was funny. Really. Once you get the bulk of the goop out, which is what I've done here, as you can see, it's all nice and cleanish and pretty inside. Now we use Senor Spoon. Get in there and just really scrape it all up. Then you want to get it as clean on the inside as you possibly can because I think pumpkin catches on fire. I mean, everything catches on fire, but if you have too many stringy bits or there's too much goop in there, it'll affect your candle if you're going to use a candle. Personally, I'm going to use a battery, like a, a light that has a battery in it this year, just because they're bright and they're pretty and they're really cheap. So, but yeah, just use the spoon and kind of scoop out more of the guts. Really just get in there and scrape it. When you're satisfied that your pumpkin has properly been defeated and cored, really to your satisfaction. I like them a cleaner inside just because it's easier to work with. But I mean, if you like it a little bit goopy, it's all personal preference. All right. Now, I'm going to turn it around so I can get to its face. Rub it in its own blood a little bit. Make it all shiny. Now at this point, you might have a marker so you can draw its face on and know what you're doing. But we're not going to do that because it's no fun and how hard can it be to mess up a jack-o'-lantern face? So take your knife and if you prefer a smaller knife, a smaller knife will do. I'm actually going to use a smaller knife to cut off the eyes and the nose. Figure out really the center of your pumpkin where it's going to be, what it's going to look like. Hopefully by this point you've already had an idea, but if you don't, that's cool too. And then just begin. When carving your pumpkin, you might be thinking about the origin. Why is it that we carve pumpkins in the first place? Well, I'm here to tell you, but that story is actually really interesting. It stems from an Irish folklore about a man named Stingy Jack. Stingy Jack tricks the devil and or asks the devil to have a drink with him, but living up to his name, Jack does not want to pay pay for the drinks. So he convinces the devil to turn into a coin so he could pay the drinks. And while the devil is in coin form, Jack puts him in his pocket next to his silver cross and traps the devil. 
In order to be released, the devil has to agree not to bother Jack for like, I think five or 10 years and not to collect his soul whenever he dies. And so the devil agrees. Well, some years later, Jack asks, or Jack tricks the devil into climbing up a tree to pick a piece of fruit. And the devil, while up there, gets trapped when Jack forms the sign of the cross into the tree's bark. In order to be released, the devil had to agree not to bother Jack for another 10 years. Well, when Jack eventually dies, because we all do someday, God does not let him into heaven because he does not like what an unsavory character Jack is. And he does not want that in his, in his domain. And the devil, keeping up his promise, doesn't allow Jack into hell either. Jack is forced to then wander around the wilderness with only the light of a small glowing coal that the devil gave him. In order to keep the coal, Jack puts it into a carved out turnip and that is where the tradition comes from because people would carve out turnips and potatoes and stuff in honor of Jack. And when they immigrated to America, pumpkins they found were a, a better medium than turnips and potatoes. So there's your history lesson for the day, the history of carving pumpkins. So while you're brutally sticking a knife into this poor defenseless thing, you can at least feel good knowing that you know where it came from and that you're not the only one that does it. This is going to be an interesting little pumpkin because I got his mouth shape a little weird. But he's at least going to be happy. And that's all we can ask really for our little our I almost called it a turnip. Our pumpkin brethren. It's happiness. Ha! There we go. Alright, when you get the face carved out, or whatever design you decide to go with, take a little time and kind of clean up the extra pieces that are probably stringing out. My nose is a little lopsided, but he's rather charming. All right, so here is my jack-o'-lantern. He's a very happy jack-o'-lantern, probably because he was able to give you such a wonderful history lesson. Now I put his hat back on. And voila, that is how you carve a pumpkin. If you're doing it with small children, as always, be sure and keep the knives and whatnot away from them or watch them with careful supervision because as we all know, knives can be sharp and dangerous and unhealthy, even if they are fun. So I hope that this has been an educational and enjoyable video. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Oh. And happy Halloween!